lights on. This is when it's the, all the pressure starts to build up. You can kind of feel it probably, right? Like, oh my gosh, I got the red light on. Um, so let me do a quick, quick sound check. Uh, why don't you tell my listeners what you had for breakfast this morning? Gee, uh, no breakfast. Um, no breakfast, okay. You know, the old intermittent fasting concept. Okay. Um, basically, you know, yeah, no breakfast. I hope, I hope that comes through a lot of the... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. How, uh, now how long have you been fasting? Has it been like, uh, do you do it often I mean, or are you just trying it up? So. Well, that's the whole concept, you know, like, is it really fasting or is it just delaying breakfast? Because really <laughs> I'm still had lunch, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, they call it fasting. I mean, I think that sounds a bit severe or, or you know, I mean, you know, just get going, drink some water, have a cup of coffee, you know, start your day, have lunch. You know? <laughs> cool. Cool. Don't bug yourself down with your eggs and bacon. Right, yeah. right. I'm physical therapist. I'm gonna go help all day if you let me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, cool. Well, I think we're sounding good. Why don't we jump right into it? So, um, why don't you tell my listeners um, who you are and what you're currently raising money for uh, over on Kickstarter? Um, my name's David Barouche. I'm a physical therapist in Miami Beach. I'm originally from Australia. Um, my, I, I guess, my mission is to basically help people who are in pain. Um, I, um, and so what I found is that mobility the, the most ha, has the most severe impact on your life. If you're in pain when walking, um, you know, that's just, you can't go to Disney, can't go on holiday. I mean, you can, but you're not going to enjoy yourself. Um, right. but I, I found I get a lot of enjoyment and fulfillment out of helping people who are in pain in their foot, ankles, knees, all that sort of stuff. Um, what I found that is that, um, stretching your calf has one of the biggest impacts on fixing those pains. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a reason for that. So it goes back, but basically I had a really tough time helping my patients stretch their calves. And if you go online and you go on the Facebook groups and the plantar fasciitis groups, they're all saying the same thing. This is a really big problem that yeah. people can't cough. I mean, they can do a calf stretch, but once you have a calf problem, that doesn't work. The calf goes into like a lockdown. It gets very rigid. It's a very leveraged, highly leveraged muscle. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I was stuck not really being able to make the big difference that I wanted to make in my patients' lives. And then I thought, wait a minute. So the best stretch I could do um, when you go to really start stretching, your heels start sliding, your foot starts slipping, and you don't get that stretch. It's gone now. And I'm like, put your shoe on, use a rubbery surface, use use whatever you can, stick your foot behind it. I wasn't getting the, the result. And I thought, wait a minute, what if I just make a locking mechanism and then you can lock your foot into it and then you can stretch using your body. I thought, well, how do I make that? And I went on that journey and I ended up making the calf bro. Nice. Nice. And for our listeners who can't see kind of how, how can you kind of describe this um, with some, uh, with, with words here right now? Uh, it is a incline system with a um, with a heel locking uh, placement uh, platform, such that your heel becomes locked and your leg becomes a crowbar mm. that allows you to stretch over the top with leverage. Right, and right, right. The, day, the bottle opener for your ankle. And and, and something uh, like this, how, like how often are are, are people? intent like are they using it once to stretch to kind of push down or are they doing it for 30 minutes 10 minutes like wh- wh- how, how is somebody sort of using it in, in their in their practice so i actually have a, a treatment method that goes with it um mm-hmm. i was fortunate enough to be able to use it on a professional basketball player yesterday um mm-hmm. which turned out to be awesome because you know for someone whose livelihood depends on their ankles yeah um, yep that, that, it means a lot to me to be able to help people like that um, and how do you to answer your question? Um, you can use it for as little as 30 seconds a day. Mm. Like literally in 30 seconds, you'll go over the top. You'll feel the most intense stretch of your life in your <laughs> calf anyway. Yeah. Um, and you'll go, Oh my God. And then you'll either break the tension and you're done. Or if you can't break the tension, you have a calf problem and then you go on to do my treatment, which it, you can it, do yourself. Are, are there like, adjustments for like, I mean, again, let's say a six, six guy or my mom using it would be different pressures and stuff. Is there like a gauge to some degree in it or no? Uh, so the cool thing is I have a, I mean, I have a picture on my phone of my two-year-old uh-huh. stretching on it and I can, you can stretch on it. If you have a two-year-old foot, 
you can stretch on it if you are a NBA basketball player. Right. And I basically, I made 10 or more different iterations of this or, or different prototypes um, in order to get the right shape and size to make it one size fits all. Hmm. Wow. Uh, so like, I'm just playing a picture. Of my, it's just cute. This is my, this is my daughter stretching on the car at the office <laughs> the other day. I know, I know if some of your viewers yeah. are, are not visual. Um, yeah. uh, basically, anyone can stretch on it. Any foot size will fit on that. And the angle is such that it's about the angle rather than size. And an mm -hmm. angle is kind of like a, a, an angle can be the same as it, you know, on, on micro as it is on macro and it's still the same angle. Right, right, right. Interesting. Interesting. So you mentioned like multiple prototypes, like how long is this journey from it being up in the head to what you just showed me? So, so I tell you what, it's a, it's, it, it's a journey of, um, it's, it's, you got to have like fortitude. Because I've been working on this since my, the daughter that I just showed you, like this is a prototype here. This is a plastic, these are 3D print models. Right. And, I, and I don't know how many people are, are visually dependent on seeing these things, but here's another one. I've, I've got them like all over the office. Um, basically, um, when you're coming along a journey like this where you're inventing something, you've got to believe in what you're doing, otherwise you're going to give up. Yeah. Um, and like... But the only way that I can constantly prove it is that because I'm a physical therapist and I'm in an office and I'm getting people coming in with foot and ankle problems and I'm using the calf probe with them and their problems are fixed. I'm like, ah, this works, you know? So I'm just going to keep pushing because the push is real. Like I, you know, filing a patent that takes, takes time and, and, and trust that, you know, you're going to spend this money and something's going to come back. Mm -hmm. um, that the, the patent was filed last year in, I think, Actually, it was in 2018, actually. I had this going for a long time. Yeah. Um, you know, all the design work, you're, you're basically paying and paying, and you're hoping and hoping. Um, but all along, if people are getting better, you know, you just keep pushing. Yeah. What, through that whole process, I mean, wh what was the, maybe the biggest thing keeping up at night? Um, I think I, I think my wife, <laughs> I think that my wife was going to get sick of me, <laughs> basically, because... I just kept talking about the cough you know, like this yeah. is like, oh, honey, I do this, and, and 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 now I need to do this, and now I need to make it collapsible. Uh, and she's like, yeah, good idea, you know, like you know, <laughs> it was it was harder. I think it's hard on her because you know I, I see that it works and everything. And she's like, this guy just keeps talking about this thing, you know. Right, right. <laughs> so you know, fortunately, now that we've come to Kickstarter and we're seeing an incredible response, I'm just I'm really grateful that. People understand what it does. Not only that, but people know already they need it. People are writing to me. I've been looking for this for so long. Something that could do this, mm -hmm. um, you know. And then they start talking about their particular condition, and I'm like, "Yes, it's for you. I made this for you." You know, right. uh, that's exciting. What What that's is exciting. sort of the typical? Is there a typical sort of buyer persona in your mind for this? Is it an athlete? Is it a bicyclist? I mean, like, like, is it just somebody that maybe had a, an injury in high school and never got it fixed? Like, is there a, a particular buyer that is really right for this or is it all uh, over the place? Everything you just said was correct. Mm. Plus everybody else with a cough. Okay. okay. Yeah. Because, I, I know I haven't stretched my caps today. I, I, I just right, rode a bike. Here. Right. So yeah. you, let's take you, Right. You know, are you an athlete? Are you a person who's had, had an injury? Are you, and you might say, you know, I may not be any of those things. Right. But you're a person who has a car. And, mm -hmm. and if you want to keep walking in this world where actually walking outside is one of the cool things you can still do, mm -hmm. um, you may end up finding that you start having a little bit of pain in your heel. Or, I mean, I don't, I don't wish that upon you, Yeah, obviously. Or you might just find that you're starting to get cramps more often if you point your toes in your bed at night. Or, I mean, you, you, you know, like all sorts of things you might, you know, start finding. If you have one of these at home, all you have to do is leave it, you know, by your front door, in your garage, whatever, under your bed because it collapses, you know. Mm. It, you just make it flat. Stores away. Under your bed, yep. right? Um, and then um, you just jump on it. And, and the cool thing is you – there's one more step to this. You can actually measure – if your cock is getting tighter, mm. you can actually see what's normal for you. So you jump on the calf pro, you put your hip to the wall and you're going to stop somewhere and you look and you say, can I touch the wall? Am I this far from the wall? Am I this far from the wall? And you start to know what is your normal angle. 
And then after you go on a trip to Disney or you go walk around the mall, you do it again and go, oh my God, I, I can't go as far as I used to. That's when you actually have to start stretching until mm. you can go as far as you used to. Otherwise, you're actually heading towards an injury and you can know that before you get an injury, which is awesome. Wow. Yeah, I, I, that would... That would that would be nice. I can I can totally see that benefit there. I mean, I know for myself, like I'll go out and I'll play like um, uh, I'd say I'm slightly active, but I'll go out and I'll do like uh, uh, racquetball or whatever. And right. like after that, man, I'm just like, oh my god, my leg. Right. You know, I play once every five weeks. I don't even if that you know or something like that. So for you, I would want you to know that you play once every five weeks. That you don't know how tight your calf has gotten since the last time you played. Right. So remember, a calf attaches, it, cu- it culminates in the Achilles tendon. Mm-hmm. So if your calf has become tight, suddenly it's pulling on that Achilles tendon. And you go to go for a shot, like we've seen basketball players do recently. Oh, yeah. And yeah, suddenly, yeah, Durant, oh, right? Kevin Durant. Yeah, 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 I didn't want to say it, but right. Yeah. So, like, so look what that did. That yeah. moment did to his life. Oh, yeah. Um, so all I'm saying is, if you, you're about, you, tomorrow you want to play racquetball, right? It was racquetball, right? Yep, yep, yep. Let, let's say you're going tomorrow, I'm saying. Um, you get the calf pro, you quickly stretch deeply both sides. Now it's almost like you, you, you've done your insurance policy. You, you're just taking care of making sure that your calf length is better and you're not going to have a problem. Wow. wow. So in your whole journey, though, when does this at least start to pop in your mind as like, something to be doing. I mean, you, you know, I, I know you have the practice and stuff, but like, where do you start to figure out that I, I want to design something? Cause it seems like that's a, maybe most physical therapists don't do that or they don't, they don't jump into that journey of making a product. When did that start to happen in your world? That's a good question. Um, I like being creative. This isn't the only product that I want to make actually. In fact, okay. there's going to be a calf pro system that's going to come along. There's more to come yeah. with this. Um, I, I, I guess if you are the, that type of person, um, yeah. I love creating, designing, thinking of things in my head. Um, but I can't help but think that a lot of physical therapists are like that. They're always coming up with treatment plans. Not only that, but you have to think in three dimensions when you're looking at a person's body and, and see where they're tight relative to their movement pattern and all that sort of stuff. I mean, I know other physical therapists who've made products too, because they just see that they see what's missing and they need to push. And they're like, well, if I don't push, how it, because my patient's sitting all the time, I'm like, hi, Dave, I've got a pain. What do I do? And I can't come to the office. And so, you know, you need to push on this spot. You need to do this stretch. And, and I need to give them something to do that right. if I can't touch them. It's basically, it's like, I want to leverage myself more than people coming to my office. Gotcha. I want to be able to help a million people at once. Like, yes. <laughs> So, so, so for you in that scenario, cause, and I think this is a lot of entrepreneurs, even if you have that idea, how did you know to, what those first steps were to make that first prototype you showed me or just, you know, or 3D print something? Like, how, how did you sort of navigate had, those waters? Oh, so how did I know? I had no idea. <laughs> um, I, I, I didn't know what to do. I, I didn't know what to do. I'm not, I'm not good at any, I mean, I, you know, I know, unfortunately, physical therapists are incredible, uh, are great at doing what they were taught at university. There's no product design at university. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Right. Um, uh, so I, I went on, on Instagram, right? So you go on Instagram and you go like prototype something, right? right. <laughs> just start learning. And I read some books. Um, I read four books. Uh, you just read books. You, you look on Google, you look on Instagram, and then you repeat. Um, and then I read another book. Uh, and they're like, this is how you do it. Uh, and then I needed a designer apparently. Uh, I looked for a design, um, and I saw how that process worked. And that was, that, that was actually, honestly, that was frustrating for me. Um, mm-hmm. I needed it to be designed, then it was wrong. And then I needed it to change and then it was wrong. And then I needed it to change. And then when they changed it, they changed something else that was good. And I'm like, no, 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 you missed the good stuff. You just changed that. But I wanted you to change. So frustrating. Right. And, and I'm I, like, what? I guess I need to add. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, how, how- you know, in the medical, how hard is it to sort of navigate those, you know, the technical side of just, you know, it's got to be made like this, this, and this, but you're looking at it on the medical side saying, yeah, but I need it to do this, this, and this, because that's actually how it will stretch or that's how it will actually work, you know? Yeah. Like my first prototype, which is, which was terrible, right? Mm-hmm. Didn't work. And I'm like, and also they made it too weak. They made it because mm-hmm. 3D printing, the more dense you make it, the longer it takes to print. Right. Um, so 
I, you know, at first they're like, oh, let's, let's make this for you so you can see what it looks like. I'm like, great, let's make it. I made it. I put my foot on it. I could literally, like, I could have broken it just standing on it. <laughs> right, I, right. In fact, it ended up breaking, right? Now, that's not what I need. I mean, I, I'm sure it's nice to see it in three dimensions, but I need to see that it actually performs the, the leveraged calf stretch. And if you can imagine, if you got a, a crowbar, and you made it out of cheap plastic and you went to like use it, it's just going to snap. <laughs> yeah. Robot doesn't work. Right. So, um, so it was frustrating. Um, in, it's always, it's always, for me, it's always been a little bit frustrating in, in that I want to, I want to change it now. And that's that all revisions take two weeks. <laughs> so every revision takes two weeks. Yeah. So you want to see it work. It's another two weeks. Right. Oh boy. Like that was just, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, to get to this, what you see here, the, the collapsible, colored, um, strong, with the pads, with the, the, this, with the, with, you know, with everything that you see, with the, with the right, you know, stuff here, right. every change took so long, you know, like, um, and it yeah, was writing the emails, and, it, and I'm with patients all day, because I work all day, you know, um, so it's at night, so it's my night job. So, and I have three kids and I have a wife and, and I want to talk to them and my kids are jumping on my face and I'm trying to write an email and it's, it's a journey. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, yeah. What, where does, in this whole journey, like where does Kickstarter start to fit in the narrative of, hey, let's, if, uh, let's go to this channel to, to pre-launch so, it? So Kickstarter was a, was a big decision um, because, you know, a lot of people said don't do Kickstarter. Um, and a lot of people say, yeah, of course do Kickstarter. So you've got the don't do Kickstarter and the of course do Kickstarter. And it's kind of like, well, well, what do those look like? Why would someone say no? Why would someone say yes? And I'm a physical therapist. So I'm like, why would there be such a discrepancy between the truth? Right. <laughs> right. What's, which one's the truth? You know, I just want the truth. Um, and both of them were kind of the truth because both of them had merit, both, yep. both arguments. And basically when it comes down to it, when you're, when you don't have a lot of money um, because, you know, you have a family and because you're running a business and you're and already, by the way, just running a business for a physical therapist is a big undertaking. <laughs> right, you right. know, it's good to be an employee. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, um, the, the, the Kickstarter concept is, is really wonderful because what they're doing is they're allowing you to test your concept with real people who expect to get a product mm -hmm. and they will get a product. Thank, yeah. thank God, you know, goodness. Um, and you don't have to have a product to sell them with um, prime shipping, like right, two days. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, um, they will get their product. It's the only one in the world. So, of course, they can't have a two-day shipping because then already there must be millions of thousands of units already. Mm -hmm. There are not. This is it. This is the only one in the world that right. looks like this. Yep. Um, but, you know, I, I think, you know, thank goodness because of, because of Kickstarter, I, you know, I, I love Kickstarter for this. I'm now, I've ordered my tooling, which is expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, and we are in the production process already. Wow. So yeah. it happens. It's, it's kickstarted my business, which is the point of kickstarter. <laughs> right, right. Well, and we haven't even really talked about numbers yet, but um, when we flip over to this, I mean, you got five days to go when we're recording this. We're going to try to get this out as fast as possible next week so we can hit the end of your campaign. But I mean, you've, right. you're over almost $250,000 right now with which, and I think the bigger number here is the 2,300 backers. That's a lot right. of backers, a lot of numbers, a lot, lot of units that have to be shipped out. Um, so which is, very, which very, very one? successful campaign. Yeah, it's it's, it's 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 truly one. I mean, that's a lot. Of, there's a lot of people that are, you know saw this and go, "Hey, that'll." I'm assuming fix my issues with my calves, right? right. Um, you know, to me that like people. It's like patients that don't have to come to my office. Yeah, that I get to help. Right. It's a lot. It's a lot of people. A lot of bodies. Um, so so you know now that Kickstarter's kind of in the in the conversation in your mind of like, hey, we're going to do this. You know. Um, what do you start to do to prepare for it? What do you start building to get the story and the narrative out um, and build out the content? Because the page, it looks great as well. So, but what's, what do you start to do in terms of ch starting to put together this story and this narrative? Um, how did I build the page? Like, how did I Yeah, do I mean, that? that's not that just physically how you build it, but just like the whole story that you have to tell people that go, oh, I get this. This is going to work for me. You know, because I think that's a big undertaking and, a lot, and, a, and, a, and something that people miss a lot. Like, you know, you know who it's that really, buyer is, but, and your buyer could have been all, all the stuff we're talking about. It could be my mom. It could be the athlete, you know? So how do you start to walk that, that line? It, it, it's really, it was really, it's been really tough because 
Um, it's not a pair of pants with a different material. Right, Everyone right. knows. Oh, it feels better and it's a pair of pants. Yep. Um, or a pair of sunglasses or whatever. It's actually something that's different and no one really understands the difference until they try it. Mm-hmm. Um, once people try it, they say, wow. And so I tried to actually capture that wow. Right. Um, and so I went to, you know, got the recordings to make people say wow. In other words, I just, we held the camera on them and we said, but we let them try it for the first time in that moment. Right. Because you want to capture their, their reaction. Because when I'm at my office, everybody says that, right? But mm-hmm. I'm doing physical therapy. And I'm actually, it's very private and I can't record them at that moment. <laughs> right, right. Um, so like I first, first I made a cartoon video to explain an explainer video. No one understood it. Right. Um, then I made uh, other videos and people were like, you know, and everyone is they're still writing to me saying, oh, you know, I can buy an incline calf stretcher on, on Amazon right now. What's the difference? And I'm like, leverage? <laughs> The difference is leverage, which is the difference between opening your bottle of beer on a, on a hot day or not opening your bottle of beer. <laughs> right. it, it's, it's that thing, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's the difference between getting rid of your plantar fasciitis, your Achilles tendonitis, your, your, um, all of your itises, or your patella t- tendonitis, or not getting rid of it. Yeah. It, it's a big difference. Um, and so, you know, explaining that difference is best done in person. But I feel like, I hope my video expl- explains it well. Mm-hmm. And if you watch my video that, you know, it, it sort of shows how it catches you and then allows you to then apply this amazing force. Because basically your calf exerts forces in excess of hundreds of pounds when it lifts your body. So, you know, you, you can do a calf raise, which is like lifting your heel off the ground. Now, whatever you weigh, multiply that by three or four when you jump. Mm-hmm. And that's how strong your calf is. So therefore, in order to stretch your calf, you need to exert, exert that much force on it in order to lengthen it. Wow. Um, you don't get that from a curb stretch or a wall stretch. Right, you just don't. right, right. Yeah, or dropping your heel. You don't get that. Yeah. Wow. What, yeah. What, um, was there any sort of data points that you were looking at before you launched so that you knew you would be successful? Were, were you trying to get email addresses? Were you trying to do social media, press? I don't know. You know were you trying to do email anything address. before you launched? Yeah, email addresses. Um, um, and I read a lot of books, and then I realized that I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> you know, and you're like, how does MailChimp work exactly? How does, <laughs> should I use contact? Should I use MailChimp? Should I use You know, like, like there's, right. there's this. And then what I do with it, and how should my pictures look? And like the list is endless. You know, right. like, I, and then, so I basically, so I tried to do some Facebook ads, mm-hmm. um, and I didn't know how much I should be spending. You know, what, it, it's, it's really complicated. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I engaged with a company to help me. And then, you know, we, as, as we're working forward, basically I, I needed to generate an email list, um, in order to make sure that I had a lot of people aware of what I was doing before I did what I did. So the yeah. pre campaigns, super important. Um, that really only takes you to day two. Yeah. So like you get to day two and that's heaps of work for day two. And then you've got to go from day two through to day 30, which I haven't even done yet. Um, and then that's, there's a different animal altogether. Um, yeah. Then you got to drive traffic and I don't know how to do that either because I'm a physical therapist. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I think COVID may have made an impact as well. Sure. Um, certainly for all the reasons that everybody already knows. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's a strange time to be, if you need anything right now, you would want it in two day shipping. And right. the truth is, I don't think a lot of things are two day shipping right now. Anyway, <laughs> no. we can't even, no. I want to get a mask for my kids right now. It's not two day shipping. No, it's not two day <laughs> shipping. Know? Nope. Nope. It's no, happening. no, but, but it's fulfillment in August. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> right. So I'm grateful to the community that understands what this product is and understands that, you know, they are going to get it. You can't get it anywhere else anyway, because it's an mm-hmm. original product. And they under, and there's so much, they understand it so well that they backed me, and, I, and I'm very grateful. Yeah, that's cool. Has it, what's has there been anything that stuck out from this campaign that you did not expect at all? Is there like countries that are supporting, or you know, has there been anything that's just like, man, I did not expect that whatsoever? Um, in the and maybe um, in the dashboard. Yeah, so a lot of contact. Um, please, you know, can we be uh, the sole distributor for your product in our country? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I haven't got through all the emails. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, I, also, I think a lot of people have teams doing this stuff. Yeah. Like, like the 
someone answering the emails and they got someone who's doing creative and they got someone who's doing all that stuff. So I'm kind of just doing this on my own. Right. Um, although after all the books I've read, I do believe heavily in automation. Um, <laughs> My, my office is fully automated. I don't have a receptionist. It runs like clockwork. And, I'm, and yep. you know, I, I'm going to automate the entire process. I actually have people in place to take care of um, manufacturing, fulfillment. That's all organized, which is, which is awesome. Um, so I'm just, yeah, I, I, the, the stuff that I'm supposed to be doing, I'm, I'm falling behind. I'm, right. Yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, so once this campaign ends and all the money starts dropping, which takes a couple weeks, what starts your process to start getting these into people's hands? Uh, um, um, basically, uh, it's all about uh, my relationship with the factory at that point and making sure that, number one, first and foremost, the product that is made does exactly what I want it to do. Right. I want the people who get this. And the other thing is I actually want to uh, put together like a little bit of a guide for them. Mm. So... Uh, I have to maybe, I, I'm, I'm working on that now with a, uh, my graphic designer, but I need to make a very clear one, two, three step picture. Not just that, I'll have a YouTube video um, so that people can watch the YouTube if they want, or they can just look at the, the piece of paper if they're not so savvy and you know, whatever. Um, but I want to make sure that I make it so that it does exactly what it's supposed to do and that people know exactly how to use it. Yeah, That's, that's everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and when they see that it works, they'll be like, yes, I'm glad I got this. <laughs> right. So, um, so what does maybe like this next year then look like outside of, you know, what you're just talking about there, making sure everything's working good. You know, it, does it look like, you know, at some point you're going to Amazon, you're going to Shopify, you're doing a version 2.0. You, you mentioned the other potential ecosystem. Is that start or is it yeah. really just getting through this process right now and then taking a breath and then seeing what next year looks like? So all of that, everything you said, everything that you just said is going to happen. Okay. At least that's my plan. I don't yeah. care if there's a pandemic. Well, there is. <laughs> yeah. um, all of that is what I want to have happen. Um, yes, this product will be available probably on Amazon. Uh, yes, I, I, I mean, I, I have a website already and, and I will have it available on my website. Uh, yes, there are more products to come. And, and the reason why there are more products to come is because there's actually a bigger treatment the concept is to have people take care of their own bodies right? Um, and feel confident that they know what to do yeah. because you Google foam rolling, it's ridiculous. <laughs> if you Google how to stretch, it's ridiculous. Yeah. The, the list is endless and I can tell you that 95% of that stuff doesn't work. Right. And so in my office, what I've, my mission has been to simplify condense, make it easy, but make it so potent. Mm-hmm. And that's what the calf pro actually does. Yeah. Uh, with regard to the first component of stretching, which is your calf. There are actually 10 components. Um, 10 is a great number. <laughs> um, and so what I intend to do is, is show the world that they can take care of their bodies. There's a, there's a whole place. There's a place missing at the gym. Yeah. Uh, there's a place where you do your prep for workout at the gym where you should feel when you walk into the gym, it's a bit, it's a bit sort of like, Oh, am I, am I wearing the right clothes? Do I smell right? Am I, am I supposed to be working out at this time of the day? Do I know how to stretch? Is my technique right? Uh, there's so much going through your head. And I want to say to people, this is how you stretch and you don't, you only have to do it like this. Yeah. And this is how you foam roll and you only have to do it like this. And you're right. Be confident, you know? Yeah. Right. There is a right way to do this. Sure. Um, and I know that it's right because I've tested it for now many years with my patients and everybody gets better. And gosh, that's an amazing rate. Um, and also, by the way, I do this to myself. Like <laughs> I take care of myself this way. This is how a physical therapist takes care of themselves. Right. Um, the calf pro is necessary for the first component of my brand plan. In a gotcha. Sense. gotcha. And so, you know, you know, my, if my son comes up to me and says, daddy, this hurts. Um, I don't want to then have to do physical therapy on him. I want to say, well, you know what to do. <laughs> right, right. That's stretch number two. Right, or right. Or your calf, that's stretch number one, and use the calf pro. And then the, my son knows how to take care of himself, and everybody else's son in the world knows how to take care of themselves. That's really my, my, my vision. You know? Yeah, that's cool. And, and how about, like, you know, projecting out maybe, like, five years or so? I mean, do you see yourself maybe getting out of the fitness th- or the, the therapy world and just being designing of the, all this stuff and running, like, the CEO of that type of company? Or... 
or are you still doing both and you got other teams built? I mean, what do you kind of visualize for five years out? Um, I, I, will, I, I, I love the product design and I wish it would happen faster. So yeah. the, the, I want to just take away the frustration uh, of, of, of waiting for some company to put my job in the queue. Right. Um, I would love to have my own, pro- my own amazing designer just sit next to me <laughs> and like, make it up, you know, so yes, I would like in five years time, I would like to have a range of products that help the world to avoid injury and be fitter and better and faster and more confident in taking care of their own bodies. Yes. I want to have that product line that people can go to use and, and be the, be the people who write reviews for the first time in their lives because they're so happy. Yeah, that's cool. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I've been ending uh, our episodes with a sort of like a lightning round questions since we're all stuck inside right now. So if you're good for right. it, I'll ask you some quick questions here. Yeah. All right. So first one, uh, what have you been watching on the old TV there? What, what, what's, what's caught your fancy? Okay. After the, what's his name? Tiger King? T- Tiger King. Yeah. Oh my God. That, was, that made me so upset. After that, I had to feel better, so I watched Star Trek Voyager. Okay, all right. So you're so you're saying you're not going to buy a tiger for two grand at all? You're not doing that. You're not. When you when you saw the scene when he took the baby away from his mother, I almost cried. <laughs> I, I good old Star Trek Voyager where we're solving <laughs> problems in the universe. That makes me uh, feel better. You know? Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, how about uh, has there been a movie that though that you've watched that's uh, that you've enjoyed? Um, so right now um, we we watch Trolls two. Yeah, yeah, you know. Now wait, did, uh, we went to watch it the other night, and they wanted twenty five dollars to rent it. Did did you? So you got talked and, into that because I said that's going to be on Netflix or HBO or Hulu, what, all the ones we have. And so they deserve it, and, I'll, uh, and, I, and the reason why they deserve it is because they missed out on their launch because of COVID. Right. Yeah. They missed out on their box office, and I feel yeah. bad for them because they made a really awesome movie for us to watch. It probably took them three years to make or more. <laughs> oh yeah. And I'm, and if I took my kids to the cinema, it would have cost me at least. Oh, but, it's, it's a right. hundred bucks. So, it's a hundred bucks to go to the movies. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, they deserve this. So yeah. yes, I rented it and I only got 48 hours to watch it. And my kids <laughs> expect to watch it over and over again. And I have rented it again. Wow. Yes. Wow, the double rental. I have, I have because they deserve it. And I would have spent more than 40 bucks if I took my kids to the movies yeah, and my yeah. kids are stuck at home and they're trying to do homeschool and it's not working. Oh, that's and not working. they're pulling their hair out and we need a movie. And yep. that's, the, and I, they've watched, um, Oh my God, the frozen two a million times. Oh, we watched it. Yeah. We just watched Sonic. We watched Sonic. Like we, that's a new that one. we haven't done that yet. I got to get that one. Okay. <laughs> that one. Yeah. We just watched that one. Yep. Okay. Um, how about, uh, are there any podcasts outside of obviously mine that you're listening to all the time, but is there any other podcasts that you listen to? So, um, I haven't, I didn't used to watch a uh, list. Sorry. Listen to podcasts so much or watch them for that matter, because I've been in my office all day working mm-hmm. with patients. But, um, other than yours, well, obviously, right. Um, my brother put me onto a podcast that I just think is incredible. Um, Gary V. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah, I, I, I he's like not, he, watch a lot of Gary V. He, he's, he, he's a, he's a special guy. And I realized that, you know, he, he's preaching, you know, not preaching. It feels, you know, he, I feel like he's a guru actually. Yeah. Um, everything he says is true and I just like the truth. So, yep. um, I just, I, I, I lap that stuff up. Like he, you know, he gave me some advice without realizing he gave me advice. I did it. And it worked, you know, mm-hmm. so I'm just, I just need to find the time to, to listen, watch you and watch him, you know, yeah. just time. Right. It's just a time issue. How, right. how about a, how about a book? Any book you've read, read, read lately? Oh, 80, 20, uh, 80, 20 marketing principles. Um, sounded like a really dry, gross, boring, uh, marketing book. Yeah. Um, it's one of the, it's like one of the, the, a number of books that I read recently. You know, I read, um, uh, what's his name? Not the tipping point. I read another one, um, outliers. Oh, so outliers is a great one. Well, um, I read another book, but, but the 80, 20 one was really like struck home because it got spiritual at the end. <laughs> He's like, you know, use this book to be successful. And then when you're successful, give back yeah. to the people who are at the bottom of the very curve that I just taught you. <laughs> Loved it. Yeah, it's great. Uh, great That's book. Awesome. And he's like, you know, 10% of people are going to hate you. And he's like, don't yep. put your energy to those people. Yeah. Because uh, 20% yeah. of people are going to think you're incredible. Yep. And I'm like, yeah, okay. I'm going to turn <laughs> and, yep. and look at those people, you know? Yep. yep. Great, great. 
Great That's awesome. Well, well, where can people dive in more, dive in your ecosystem, your world, follow you? Where, where should we send people outside of the Kickstarter? So apparently I'm, I'm, I haven't been giving a lot of energy to my Instagram and my Facebook <laughs> again, because I'm not, apparently I'm better in person <laughs> than I am on online. And I, I, that's why I like to do what I do. Um, uh, I am on Instagram. Uh, I love Instagram. Uh, I am on Instagram as um, Anatomy PT Dave. My office is Anatomy Physical Therapy. Um, and so I shortened Anatomy PT Dave. My name's Dave. Um, or Calf Pro. So um, Calf Pro is my other Instagram. Calf Pro is really where I'm just showing photos of the product. And, and I'm, I ultimately will be just putting pictures of people using it, um, showing how it's hopefully changing lives. Um, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, cool, David. I appreciate you taking time out of your day. No, you're busy. Uh, you got your campaign winding down here. You probably got to get back to patients. Uh, but I appreciate you taking time out of your day because this is a great campaign. It was executed perfectly. Uh, and I think this product's going to help a lot of people. And I'm really glad we could, uh, we could connect and chat about it. Appreciate it. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to be on the call. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate it.